Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you one of my honor roll coaching sessions from the School of Support. We will look at laning phase reviews at four different ranks. If you're interested in getting your own review like these at a very reasonable price, please follow my Patreon link in the description below to join the honor roll. Let's get into it. So I believe what we talked about, remind me if I'm mistaken, was trying to pressure from fog. Trying to make pressure from fog. And yeah. avoid those triangles, right? Where you would 1v2. Mm -hmm. You also suggested that I um, get take the first three melee minions. That's really hard to do with this elo because the uh, ADC will just kill them. I, I get maybe one and then they're all dead. Kill the second wave melee minions with your relics. Okay. To, to get level two first. Okay. All right. So we're gonna not leash bot. I mean, we either leash or we start in lane and look to generate an advantage. But we're. Mm -hmm. I meant to go help, and I miss. I actually clicked the wrong place to move. Okay. Okay. And I got like one swing, and then went to bot lane. <laughs> sure. I think moving forwards, if your jungler is bot, just be there by 130. Mm -hmm. Hit it a bunch of times and then you can run bot. Yeah. Because you the problem ADC now. Yeah, the problem now is like you're not getting the experience for these melee minions. And so now you're not going to hit level 2. Mm -hmm. when you want I to didn't hit, level, hit two. level 2 when he did. So I think we need to take a few steps back and just be, be on the same page, I guess. Like if your ADC is down here and not leashing, then we are going to, you know, play for the lane and otherwise we're both leashing over here. Yeah, that, that's a bit tricky. So we're going to be very delayed in our experience. Remember where we pressure from as well. So a couple points here. Um, in general, throughout the 2v2 lane, we want to look to pressure from fog and look for hooks from fog. Obviously, if Senna is out here by herself, then we don't want to allow her to just kind of walk straight through here. So looking for a hook here is a really good time. Once again, I'm not going to talk about like the skill shot accuracy, just when and where uh, we are looking to throw the, the hooks from. So right now looking for a hook here, that's good. Hanging around afterwards is not good anymore because you, you're never going to get into range to order them, right? They're range champs. So we just have to run away as soon as our hook misses. All I did was give them free shots. Yeah, we also don't want to ignite unless we're trying to kill them. This isn't a spell okay. that you want to throw out for poke. You really want it to have that kill threat. Because if you okay. find that all in, you drop an ignite on them, you look for that 100 to 0, then you, know, you can actually kill them. So yeah, see your ignite as a quite an important resource. And... Okay, so we are eventually going to move towards Fog here. <clears throat> I think something that might help while you're just learning, you know, the game in general and how, what kind of trades Nautilus can take, which ones he can't, is to start looking for hooks and throwing them out a lot more. So we do want to be pressuring from the bushes. And if you if you ever see like an opportunity to, to hook someone, like let's say you're standing right here, we're not like running backwards right now. We're really trying to find an opportunity to find a hook, then you know that, that'll be really good for you to learn. Because Nautilus is really good at these short kind of trades. Where you hook someone, you order them, you run away. Mm-hmm. 
that makes sense. And, and right there, right when that one mi caster minion on theirs dies, mm -hmm. that would I could have flash hooked. You don't even have to flash. Oh. You just you just run forwards and hook her. Okay. So don't waste the flash there. I thought I'd need the range. No, you don't need the range. The the hook is quite long, and she was like standing next to a wall, you know, so she kind of has to walk this way anyway. Okay. So I would say there's a lot that you need to learn in terms of just spacing and, and leaning and skill shots and everything. So just start trying a lot of things. Okay. And overstep your limits in a lot of ways and then learn from that rather than being too scared to do anything. And then, you know, it's, it's hard to get any real type of learning from that. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Fail up. Yeah, there you go. Because what the situation we don't want is Nautilus for never to throw a hook, never to pressure, and then you know we may as well be playing any other type of champ. Nautilus wants to find hooks. You need to know what a good hook is, what a bad hook is, and the best way is to you know experience that for yourself. I will say that pressuring from fog is going to help you there, and looking for short trades like hook into an auto into runaway is going to be very important. Otherwise. Just start trying a lot. So trying these these hooks and these trades, this is really what, what you need to do moving forwards. Um, and then asking yourself why it doesn't work out. Okay, So let, let's see what happens. You hook in. Um, you're very low already. Twitch is very low and he's trying to deal with the wave over here. And so maybe the learning that we can take from a situation like this is if you are chunked and they're healthy and then we try to take a fight, maybe it's it's not that good of an idea. And then maybe we, we figure out how we got so chunked and we try to prevent that in the future. Okay, that makes sense. Thinking back to what led up to the situation, not just what you do in the situation that already exists. Yeah, it's it's tough if you don't have experience in the game, but that's what we, we want to aim for. And so just kind of noticing how your HP got so low. We took an extended trade just before. We took an extended trade here. We hung around for too long, and we know our Twitch is really low. We know they have minions here, so if we take a fight, all of their minions are going to hit us. We know that we're kind of low. We know that we don't have Ignite, so we don't have Kill Threat. Hopefully you can start to see some of these things adding up, and yeah, I think that's probably going to be the best advice for this session. Let, let me see. And just notice, like, if you are really low, then you don't have to through it. So you need to stay healthy, you need to pick your windows well, and you need to learn what those windows are through a bit of trial and error. Hopefully I can lead you in the right direction for what those will look like, but... I don't want to overwhelm you with a bunch of new stuff to work on. That's fair. Just look for short trades and try a lot. And embrace that failing is going to be a necessary part to learning. And then try to watch your games back over it and think critically about why it failed. Is that all good? That's all very good. Thank you. Cool. All right. All right, so before we jump into all of this, I would like to get a little bit of a background about you in terms of like what rank, what your champ pool is, what you're looking to achieve with league, things like that. Okay, um, I'm from Satu. I'm a platinum jungler. Um, cool. This account is like gold, gold two. I've been playing support. Uh, so I, I signed up for like, um, your coaching because like um ever since like I watch your videos with Curtis, I've been watching your videos and it's been very helpful. Cool. And I didn't know that you could like play support like this or like there's a, like a lot of like um, nuance and like yeah. And For like sure. That. Yeah. So are and... you trying to complement your jungling with like secondary support or are you considering <laughs> moving to primary? Yeah, I'm, I've been enjoying mm -hmm. support, so I've been just. Actually, I don't know. I think I regress on jungling <laughs> just because, like, um, I've been enjoying support at the moment. 
Because okay. like it's, I think it's like the most powerful role. I think besides med, besides med, I don't. Sure. Yeah. So, because hmm. if you're playing support secondary and you're looking to play bard, this is a champ along with like Pike and Thresh that needs a lot of champ mastery, a lot of time on, and it's very hard to get that if you're just queuing secondary. So typically, yeah. when people do play secondary support, I'm recommending more easy to execute champs where you can practice like actually understanding how the role works because you don't really have that much time to play the role right if it's your secondary with that yep. said to, were all the games that you linked me bad games it's oh uh, there's one not the less game i mean on this account i've been playing just bard okay okay a couple of not games. all right yeah i think so we can we'll, we'll review a bad game but just keep that in mind that playing any other supports along with Bard as a secondary is going to make it quite hard for you to learn support as a role in general. Yes, sir. Cool. <clears throat> Let's get into it. And then, okay, so the setup suggests that you may have seen the Bard guide. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So I'll, I'll give a... What's that, sorry? Oh, I liked it. I liked the video. Cool. Very good. Um, I think we'll just give a brief, like, holistic overview of how we expect the game to play out. Things that you should just have a think about at the start of the game is, like, how is their... How mobile is the enemy comp? Like, which members are easy alt targets? And pretty much all three of these champs are pretty easy alt targets. Um, yeah. Israel, he's happy to just kind of Q farm and the 2v2 lane is going to be a bit rough. So we should expect to pressure around mid, concede pressure around bot. And obviously if different things happen, we can adapt, but that's probably where we're going to be looking to generate pressure. And that's just Bard typically. He struggles in the 2v2 to generate pressure and he thrives in creating number advantages and pressuring towards another area and then using that pressure to kind of relieve bot pressure. Okay. Let's get into it. So we're going to ward, we're going to go sweep. Oh, we started Relic. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know how this matchup works, so... Yeah. I was kind of scared of like, I can getting both out. Yeah, I, I can see the hesitation and wanting to take Spell Thieves in a really tough lane. But if you pick your moments really well, if you find just those Q auto trades, and if you are roaming a lot and pressuring through mid and jungle, you will find those windows to proc your spell thieves as well. If okay. you make the most of your W, sustain your potions, then you can take a bit of damage to proc all three spell thieves in one go. And you can definitely make spell thieves work in pretty much every situation. And magic, uh, sorry, mana regen scales a lot better than health regen, just so you can have uptime for all of your abilities as the game goes on. Not the biggest deal. Let's try and tackle exactly what we should be looking for instead. So we're going to want to treat the early lane as a war of attrition. Make sure that, because they obviously just dominate us in 2v2 trades, right? They have a lot of poke, a lot of, they outrange us pretty heavily. And if we yeah. can just overwhelm them with minions, then we can avoid getting heavily traded on. So good start to the lane, definitely. <clears throat> and looking for like a queue into an auto is great. And that's where the trade ends. Done. Okay, now you just run away. You chill out. Because we've that that's all we can offer to a trade. Now we're just gonna be using our like naked auto attacks to try and slap the center and we're just going to lose the trade from this situation onwards. We're hanging around. Okay. We're going to eat a center auto. We're going to get Caitlyn yeah. queued. We're going to eat another center auto. And now we unnecessarily lost quite a lot of health. Okay. And this isn't... So just the Q was good? So Q and auto. Like... Okay. This isn't bad specific either. You generally don't want to... You want to take short trades when you have... When you don't just hang around for naked auto attacks. You know, you want to use your abilities, like with the Nautilus, you hook, and then you use your auto passive, and then what can you do? You know, the rest of the time, you're just going to be throwing out 
naked auto attacks. That's not going to do anything. Same with bards. Same with enchanters. You use a spell, back it up with an auto, and then you just kind of get out of there. So maybe thinking about taking short trades, short, concise trades. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Okay, here's the second wave. We have our relics. So this, we need to feel a sense of urgency here on the second wave. We get level two after the three melees. Since we did take relic, that's like almost half the strength of having relic and having that wave control and trying to get level two before them. I understand that bard's level two isn't scary, but I mean, Ezreal gets a uh, pretty useful ability and you can still chunk them from your level two spike. So there's a big delay before we start hitting the second wave melees. Mm. And we can't do this um, because they're going to hit level two. And now we're, we're just getting kind of one v How should I do it like faster in here? Oh, how should you hit level two faster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like after this trade, like what should I be doing now? Back off, then auto, auto minions. Yeah, just, just look to auto minions. <clears throat> this sweeping the mid bush, pretty low priority right now. There's not, there isn't any kind of contesting going on for mid bush. These are just orders that could be going onto the the minions instead. Like who, who cares if this bush is watered right now? You're not trying to camp in this bush and remain in fog. You know, you're trying to get level two. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're this whole time we're just ordering melees instead. So there's. It's like three to five seconds where we're not doing anything. And that's a long time. And it's not, I don't necessarily want to point out every kind of frame where you could be autoing. It's just, if you have this mentality, this mindset to try and find windows to auto attack, then you'll, you'll be able to find more of them. If you're looking for an excuse. So you're forcing them to either like run straight at you and zone you off or you're going to find autos. Okay. Even if you take a little bit of poke, they're ordering you instead of the wave. Like this is something that you can start to feel out. Sometimes it is okay to take a little bit of damage if you get level two first and you can use that level two spike to get a big chunk on the enemy, something like that. That makes sense. Okay, so th there's a... There's an opportunity missed to get level two. That happens. But we should know that they get two here. And our level two spike doesn't really do anything. So only if they can't, if they're stuck level one and then we get level two. But here, they're going to get level two. <clears throat> and now we're kind of 1v2ing them. Yeah. So we, we do get a stun, but this is always going to be a bad trade. And this is going to be spacing in the bot lane. It's going to be very different to jungle, obviously. But how we... We don't want to create a 1v2 situation. Here, this is like a 1v2 situation. Your Israel's is way back here. So mm. you're either... Um, like, kind of in line with him so that you're neither of you are ever 1v2. Or you can look to stand on the side of the lane and then try to find a 1v1 isolated trade so that you can like kind of queue order over here. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we want to be a bit scared about walking into a 1v2. So it's very lucky that they're randomly scared here. They could almost kill you. You're right. I should be dead. Mm -hmm. So Tena orders you. She levels up W. She presses W. Caitlyn levels up. W, she presses W, and then, yeah, you're kind of screwed. So we didn't get punished there, but yeah, the spacing is definitely something that you want to think about for bot in general. And as bard, like, your strength does not come from, like, heavy trades in the 2v2 lane. You want to, like I said, try to force number advantages or take very short trades with your Q and auto, and then you're just kind of chilling. Trying to um, overwhelm them with minions if we can, things minions. like that. So I should just be pushing here, then, coach. Yeah, we, we should be looking to push. Pushing it. 
as as for as long as we can until we can't sustain it anymore then we accept reality and then they're going to be pushing into us and then we try to stay healthy and eventually okay. we're going to be able to you know base get boots and then start to roam and do what we wanted to at the start you know precious rumored sack bot but yeah, the, the heavy trading and the 2v2 and the aggressive posturing. Like, I, I would rather that you do overstep rather than understep so that you can learn the limits of how yeah. far up you can position. But it is important for you to understand why this failed. Yeah. And a lot yeah, of times the limit is going to be because of walking into like a, a 1v2 situation. And this is something you just kind of have to deal with as a support. You can be as aggressive as you like, but if your ADC is far back here, you can't do anything uh, in terms of trading. What you can do is try to uh, like damage the minions as much as possible. You know, provide some confidence for Ezreal to move up. But if he doesn't, then we have to just embrace reality and chill back here as well. Okay. And so there's, it's like a dance, right? You want to stay on the edge, um, right on that edge between danger and safety. You don't want to be like sitting back here, giving them an absolute free lane. You don't want to be running into them like this because then you're out of position. But you want to be like just on the edge of their ranges, enticing them to try to auto attack you, to try to throw spells at you, but they just can't quite get it. So that's definitely not a, a bad specific thing either. That's just in general. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've been so trying it, but I guess this is kind of extreme. And I'm seeing my mistake now. I didn't mm -hmm. even, when I reviewed this, that I wasn't thinking about this. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so this is a very incompetent bot lane that you're versing. So they just kind of run in and, and die for free. Okay. What we want to have a look at doing now is trying to find a decent base timing. Obviously, we don't want to stay in lane with really low HP. We also yeah. have a bit of gold from the kill. So we need to start thinking uh, how we can get back to base, you know? Can we crash this wave into tower and base? Do we have to embrace reality and just base right now? Or should we wait until they stack a big wave, they crash the big wave, we help farm that wave, and then we base? <clears throat> so yeah this is what we we have to be thinking about and how about you give me your preliminary thoughts on what we should do i mean to be honest when this was in game i was like i wanted to base because like he, ezra couldn't die to like level two caitlin sure like after this kill i, wa I wanted to base yep like right now you mean yeah, but mm -hmm. like I don't know if my Ezra would base as well and like and just like lose all this minions. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know can... how to crush this too. How, can we crush this? I, I don't think so because like like there's like a big wave and there's like a cannon. Like it's like it's kind of impossible to to crush it. Yeah, I agree. This is too hard to crush. You can you can definitely base. There is... What did you say your concern to do with Ezreal was? It's because, like, people in this era, like, when they see their support base, they just, like, instantly base, too, and, like, they lose the whole wave. It, it was mm. kind of funny, but... Oh, yeah, I don't know, but I should have base here, right? You, you can definitely correct. base here. Um, your two options is just to kind of chill, hang around in the lane, wait for Caitlyn to, like, crash a stacked wave, and then after you guys collect that wave, then you can base. Or, like you wanted to do, you can just base immediately. In terms of Israel randomly basing immediately as you press base, I mean, it's not the worst base timing for Israel either, because he, he might be able to get back in time to catch the, the stacking wave over here. But also, you can, you can ping him to stay, if that's something that you're scared of okay you can communicate what you want to have happen but i think the first step we should figure out is exactly what 
the best play is before we worry about communicating what the best play is. So the best play here is just like basing, right? It's probably basing immediately. Although this isn't this isn't too bad of an idea to hang around, get your level three, wait until the wave crashes, and then you can base. Because maybe you remember hearing this in my guide, but Bard at level three with boots and sweeper, he's practically full build. Yeah. So we just let Caitlyn push his wave into tower, collect, help our ADC kind of collect the melees, and then we can be on our merry way, spend our gold. And so now this is just going to be an open-ended kind of whenever you want to base you can, because you're not going to be achieving any kind of 2v2 pressure. You guys are quite low, it's a losing lane. You don't want to just be hanging around in a lane, not pressuring anything when we yeah. can find a base. Like, Israel's more than happy to just chill out in this lane, press Q, you know, farm up some minions. They're not holding a freeze over here. They're not stacking a gigantic wave where they could, like, try to dive your Israel or something. And so this leads us to our first main point in terms of being allergic to exerting zero pressure. If you ever feel like you're just existing somewhere, you're not really achieving anything, then we need to start thinking about what where else we can be. And that's going to be a feeling that you will feel a lot as bad in 2v2 lanes. Because you, you can see that the last like 90 seconds almost, we're just yeah. kind of AFK in lane. Okay. Imagine we based, we come out with boots and a sweeper, you know, we drop a pink here and then we're portaling through here, forcing Annie's flash or achieving something rather than just, you know, existing down here. Can you see that alternate reality I happening? I could see that because like um, on some of my games it kind of extreme that I left my ADC and they, <laughs> the enemy team get like three to four plates. Yeah. And then, then my ADC flame me, so... Yeah, so I'm still trying to figure it out. It's good that you're pointing it out, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll help... It, but... Yeah. We'll try to find that balance, you know? You don't want to never be bot, but you also don't yeah. want to always be bot. And so what you need to do is look for opportunities to pressure, and then if something bad happens bot, figure out was it from... Was it a consequence of your decisions? Uh, could we minimize it better? I would rather you like kind of test those limits than chill out and do nothing. Because that is something that, it's a very valid concern. You know, you're roaming and then your ADC is just losing minions and plates. But if we are trying to maximize our pressure in this area, and then the enemy bot lane is just walking up, hitting our tower, and this is all in fog, and then you portal your jungle through and kill them, like that's easily something that can happen. Or you even help mid get prior and then your mid moves into fog and then they have to respect that and then your tower is healthy. There are a lot of ways that it can play out, just try to feel them out, try to find windows to pressure away from where you can't pressure. Um, I got a question then. What if I base then, how do I pressure mid? Should I start auto attacking him? But you no, 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 but no. You stay in fog. Just stay far. You sprint here, you plop a pink in this uh, pixel bush and then you're looking for any and all opportunities to gank the enemy. And if there aren't any opportunities to gank the enemy, that means that she's getting shoved in and she's under the tower. And then, great, you have mid pressure. Mm -hmm. You can use your mid laner's pressure to, you know, link up. Uh, maybe look to, to gank somewhere or whatever. For the for most of the time, the enemy is not going to be stuck under her tower. And then you can look for those War of Attrition ganks. Remember in that guide, Versus the Azir, when yeah. I was just constantly harassing. Uh, that's versus Azir, Annie is immobile, we can kill her. You have a Lissandra, Rek'Sai, jungle. So you, you just live around fog here. And if an opportunity presents itself, then you take it. If the opportunity okay. doesn't present itself, you stay in fog. And you, okay. you just kind of live in the fog between mid and bot. 
because an opportunity, I guarantee it's going to present itself somewhere eventually. So we still haven't based. I'm just going to speed this part up because this is the whole yeah. whole point. We've missed several minutes of being able to actually pressure the map. <clears throat> okay, this is good. This is good. Sweep that out. Good. So you make sure that Bot River's in fog. If she ever walks up to contest, then we can be aggressively positioning to punish. So we should be mid this whole time. You know, your Ezreal's basing. You... Yeah. Could I have, could I have harassed Annie in here? Like, at any point of time? Right. So, the thing that we have to take into account for this situation is that your Lysander is incredibly out of mana. And so maybe the way that we influence mid right now is just to help Lys shove and get a base off. If she had more mana, then yeah, you'd be sitting in this uh, in the chickens area here and then just portaling over looking to queue and kill the Lys like that. Or you can be just standing in this bush, you swept it, you know you're in fog, looking to portal. And so then Annie just can't really do anything. But okay. since this is Oom, you probably just kind of have to shove this wave with her and then either back to bot fog or link up with your jungler. But if we do pass bot, let's just notice how little there is to achieve. Yeah. Okay. So I think what we'll say for you to work on moving forwards is developing that allergy to exerting zero pressure and trying to find a window to base, you know, get your boots, get a pink and start pressuring where you can actually pressure. A lot of the time, there's not going to be bot 2v2. Yeah. Um, yeah, because like I'm having problem like when I'm reviewing games, like... Uh, I really don't know how to pressure mid sometimes. Sure. Like, yeah. It's tough. And I think a lot of it is just going to come from trying and failing. Okay. I think a few pointers that you should ask yourself when you are reviewing is, are they out of position? Like, if they're not out of position and then you try to mm -hmm. do something, then you're just showing mm -hmm. on the map. And yeah. you, you want to embrace that fog. So don't show unnecessarily and get used to this whole terrain as bad, you know, portal through here, portal through here. And yeah, if, you're, if your mid laner is oom, then you shove. If your mid laner is really low, then you can shove with them, oh. whatever. Okay. Just start, start doing things. And then I, I know it's, it's a bit, it's not the greatest advice, but Anything is better than nothing. So you're gonna literally achieve nothing down here. Start, start like playing around, you know, thinking um, which terrain you can use. Should you shove? Are they gankable? Uh, make sure that you make the bot river in fog, and then hopefully opportunities will present itself. Okay. Cool. Any more questions before we move on to the next lovely honor roll? Um, no, that's it. That's a lot. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it, coach. Have a good day. You too, man. I'm just trying to play like a psycho. Okay. <laughs> but okay. uh, I, I wanted mostly just to check if the fights we end up taking, if they're the correct. I mean, we come out on top, but I don't know. When I was reviewing them, I couldn't decide if it was a good idea or a bad idea. So. Okay. <clears throat> and we do something cheesy at the beginning, <laughs> which gets us ahead for the rest of the game. But, uh... Yeah, I was just trying to push in. I, do, I also wasn't sure how to play into a cast bot because I don't fight ages very often. Yeah. So I That's was testing totally my fair. limits and I was getting all of her. Okay. Because her Q is <laughs> really far. Mm. So mages in the bot, they typically really struggle in the early stages because they are more Banana. ability uh, dependent, like levels. And yeah, they're very managated at the start. They don't have reliable DPS at the start, which ADCs do. So typically, especially if they don't take TP, like what mages need to do is take TP 
and try to base and TP back when they have like a lost chapter and then they can kind of play it out. For mm -hmm. that, they are going to struggle in any kind of extended trade. So they just don't know that themselves. And so we yeah. can see the extended trade. Like Cassio is one of the better mages in an extended trade with her E, but still it's always going to pale in comparison to an ADC. Whereas more okay. AD, who has a you know lethal tempo, things like that. And I think I do kill. We I think we could have killed her, but I got nervous about Twitch, so I didn't keep going. <laughs> so you're telling me we missed an opportunity rather than made a mistake? Yeah. <laughs> Missed an opportunity. Yeah. Because if I had just kept running forward, at least I could have chunked her enough that she wouldn't stay like this. Potentially, yeah. You weren't under any threat at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't even taking. I was disappointed because right. I was thinking oh, I just gotta because I got into the game and I was like I'm bonk them a bunch with my damage and. Yep. And then Twitch said I'm, I'm gonna Q on them and I was like, well, okay. <laughs> and then my brain stopped working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they just kind of donated us first blood, which is money. Yeah, helpful. Which is great. We'll base. We'll come back to lane. We should take Q second thinking... as well. Okay. This is this is like a scaling ability, and your E is great in lane. Your Q is pretty solid in lane as well. But yeah, that, this is not going to do anything at level two. As you can probably tell. <laughs> That's perfectly fine though. I was trying to contest the push, but... Yeah, I think this wave is looking pretty big. Eventually, we might just have to concede and let it crash. And then once it bounces out, then we try to use that bouncing wave to start up that war of attrition. Mm -hmm. However, both of us failed to embrace this reality and just take a huge amount of damage. And so now yeah. it's going to be trickier to play that War of Attrition, you know? Just let this yeah. wave crash, use this wave to Coming. get... Yeah, to get that pressure once again. We also want to try and be a bit deliberate with our spells as well. So let's see what I mean here. Your E comes up. You want to E him as soon as it's up because he's going to take damage. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I was watching. I was. I watched my E come on and I was like, mm, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but like, even if yeah, you yeah, miss yeah. that window, you E him like randomly now. Yeah, right here. Like, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of discipline would have gone a huge way in this situation. Like we could have both been full health. And then we try to prevent Cassio from damaging melees here. Try to order them when they're trying to order our minions while your Twitch is kind of CSing. We're spamming orders on this wave. Trying to get some pressure back. Okay, I'm glad to see these orders here. So what we want to probably do here is just ping that they're going to move and then... Like the problem is we've... Our resources are quite low as a lane right now. Our mana and health is not looking too hot. So ideally this would be a, a situation to just really start to win that war of attrition. On. Yeah. Yeah, so I was thinking uh <clears throat> when instead of even instead of moving up like that at all, should I have just been hitting the wave? Just because we don't bring anything to that fight even if we get there. So yeah, the thing is like if you if you were full health and mana for sure. Just go. Yeah. But since, since you guys are quite chunked, I'm not sure if you if you guys can even like crash the wave into their tower. Um so the mistake has been made just by taking so much damage. Taking too much damage. Yeah. yeah. I was noticing how much damage. Mm -hmm. And here we can see what I mean with the mages. Like they can only deal damage if they use up their mana. And so now right. imagine if we're 
way healthier and then Kasia's trying to stay in lane with like 50 mana she can't you know you just right. naturally dominate the 2v2 war of attrition you never let her get a free base without missing an entire wave because this is like I mean, even though she dies here it's still pretty good because Trish loses like a considerable number of minions here I don't, I don't want to have a look at the I don't want to do a results based analysis oh I see okay yeah oh. We just need to know like what what kind of things we're looking for, rather than did this one random fight turn out well or not. And yeah, the the main issue was being too low. Yes, not in, in, not okay. embracing reality on that stacking wave that they had. That just one. let it crash, stay healthy, use the following wave to dominate okay. TV two, and also. Maybe just understanding mages bot a little bit better in terms of like they eventually will run out of mana and then you can just really dominate and keep them in the 2v2 lane if you stay patient. Focus on trying to do damage to cast and just trying to bait out her abilities with my W. Since I took it, I can use it to run around or is that not worth it? No, we, we can't use W pretty much at all in this lane unless your Twitch gets okay. caught and you need a polymorph Cassio who's already in range of Twitch. But... You don't want to waste mana to give yourself a bit of move speed. That is absolutely nothing in the lane. You need all the mana you can okay. to Q and E. Okay. So I just want to show you this situation one more time because it is always going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Let's take stock of what happened. You killed them, you crashed a wave. It's slow pushing into you. They're stacking a wave. Let this stacked wave crash, and then stay healthy, and then once this wave comes out, you can use this they wave for full health, we're preventing them from autoing, no, they can't get orders here for free, just being annoying. Right. And then so if we had the health, that's when you, that's when you would trade. If, if, if we were full, we would be a lot more confident trading that to get the minions out, right? Because they're still going to hit us a little bit, maybe, or not. Would they just back off because we're full? It's hard to say look to trade when you're full because like you can't trade if they're not out of position. What I want you to right, look okay. for is to gain that upper hand in the war of attrition. And then if they miss position, then you can trade on them for sure. Okay. But the whole, the whole trading thing is going to be a dance. You're going to want to dodge her cues. You're going to want to not <laughs> 1v2. Yeah. You're going to want to recognize when one of them is 1v2. You know, you can't just say, mm -hmm. you know, trade here always. Mm -hmm. But you can always look for that War of Attrition and picking the right moment to regain that upper hand. Right. So, ignoring what's on your screen right now, just picture yourself crashing a wave, basing, next wave slow pushes into you. You let that crash and then you wait for the, the right moment, stay healthy, use the following waves to once again win that War of Attrition. Right. Does that sound doable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so hard to switch back and forth between <laughs> trying yeah, to sure. hit everything and then just being patient. Because sure. when I'm Karma, I can just force it because I have magic Q. Okay, well, but... like we, we can hit the wave, but we need to stay healthy. Right. Let's go exactly. back a little bit. Like if you want to fully embrace this Perma War of Attrition, sure. Like you, you can hit minions right. to hit whenever it here, possible. But if they're going to... Yeah. But if it's not possible, then we don't hit it. So hitting, uh, I'm perfectly fine with you trimming this wave, you know? Right. But here, this is but stuff way like out of position. Um, so luckily you don't get heavy traded on there. You can still look for windows to auto minions, sure. Auto minions, we got hit by a Q. We're going to take like three E's to the face. We're heavy trading. This is not war of attrition uh, in terms of the, the minion HP advantage, right? This is just all out kind of heavy trading. For no reason, because our jungler's topside. <laughs> Even if he was here, it wouldn't be that good. Well, yes, you don't. You don't really want your jungler to influence this lane because you yeah. have a gang set up. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. Are we? Are we all good? Yeah. Okay. Before we wrap it up, then how about you tell me what you're going to be working on then, moving forwards? <sighs> working on focusing about accepting reality. So if I can't get the push and win the war of attrition i have to wait until i have the minion advantage oh. mm -hmm. and also 
<laughs> respecting mages and their ability to slap me in the face if I miss. Sure. And... Understanding mages better, their strengths, their weaknesses. Yeah. Remember one of our sessions when you were shoving into their tower and then your waves crashed and then you, you were kind of struggling to maintain that HP advantage because the wave had crashed. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? That's mm -hmm. exactly what they're going to experience. If I do it right, yeah. Yeah, like it's going to be hard for them to maintain pressure right, on this like coming wave. Back. Yeah, if you... Yeah, exactly. It's, there's always going to be that natural kind of seesaw and you just wait for the right moment. Stay patient, stay healthy, and it'll come. This all good? Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Still sticking to the Nord Pike for the most part, right? Yeah, I'm leaning towards Pike more a lot now. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's why that helped me climb in the first place too much, and then I stopped playing him as much, and I started struggling. So. Yeah. I think I think Nautilus needs to be like more of a secondary for me. Right. I mean, since you are high either, I, I genuinely think Nautilus got quite a lot worse with the durability and yeah that's why i've completely dropped him but if i were to choose between northern pike personally just on in terms of solo strength i would definitely go as pike yeah I'm, i feel i'm feeling a lot better now um in my games yeah and like i feel like i'm finally getting back to on track cool that's good i you're probably like pretty comfortable with the champel but if I were in your shoes again, I would I would probably back up the pike with like a Rakan or a Bard rather than the Nort. But okay. that, that that just depends on your personal preference and your yeah, mastery. I'm putting a champs. lot of games on Bard right now on, on the D two account. Cool. I'm trying to get them ready. So yeah, all right, let's get into it. Okay. There you guys have a pretty scary level one for sure. Mm. I really like that we we hold the ignite. It would have been great if Draven flashes here, forces Samira flash and chunks her, but I mean it's hard to call that. Okay, good stuff. I, think I could have told him not to stand on top of me when we go yeah. this, because I was already thinking about it before it yeah. happened. So I could have communicated it. Yeah, I'm putting myself in your shoes, and I would, I would ask to not get double W'd. Yeah. But yep, good trade. And now, now it comes XP denial because you guys took such a strong trade level one, and then Samira were kind of really weak at this stage as well. So your Draven's got the right idea here for sure. Ah, okay, rough. <laughs> um, I felt like we we started to give a lot of space in the lane here. Like we didn't quite realize how dominant of a position we were in. He's a melee minion. You have a, a Chad Draven versus she's a melee minion, range minion, very low range minion right now. And just making sure that they can't step up for these whatsoever. I think we can be right here, especially with the pressure that Draven's giving us. Okay, so now we're tasked with a pretty rough wave state. It's hard to tell what exactly is going to happen, because it is on their side, but we have way more minions. Okay, pretty doomed. So there wasn't anything in particular for this game that you wanted to have a look at? No, not really. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're diving. Ah oh, shit, she just hit level 2. Okay. So really good 2-step. Can we 1-step? 
Yeah, we can probably just trade our life here. Okay, sure. I like that. Cool. Good job. Yeah, you told me to pressure dives more. Like, yeah. I was letting people live, and I've been denying a lot recently. Yeah, yeah. This is beyond worth, denying this gigantic wave. Like, the, the two options here are we wait until we have Q, and then we try to... Because we know that W's a gigantic cooldown. And then we try yeah. to just kill her and survive. But uh, this is perfectly fine as well. I think this might... It's tough. I really like this decision. Yeah, I just wanted her to miss as much as yeah. possible, so... Agreed. Okay. Tier 2 rush. Love it. ADC is going to die. What I'm hoping for is that we're alerting Rengar to the missing summoners. Yes, I'm timing them. Cool. And so, really good way to stay. Unfortunately, ADC is dead. So, if we can try to hold this wave. Okay. Okay, great. Job done. Just got to be a little bit careful with our health pool now, but I think we should be good. So, we know Samira has W. We're not going to E just yet. Okay, so we got, yeah, yeah th this was the, the outcome I was worried about. We have to be really disciplined with our health pool. And I think the health pool took a bit of an unnecessary hit from us using EQ around here. Because now we don't really yeah. have EQ to dissuade the crash, and we just have to face tank. Yeah. So no EQ, just try to face tank as much as you can. And... So we did everything like pretty well here. <clears throat> Just they have no flashes. They have to find a kill here. They really do. We have yeah. to realize how screwed this mirror is. And her only out is to kill you here. And we kind of, uh, yeah, we just give it to her. So if she gets two, this is really, really rough. Good lesson. These are very volatile moments that one decision can make all the difference. Oof, yeah, this is a huge turn in the game. Okay. And she gets base off. I don't mind that the hard crash here and just sprint towards the rest of the map, to be honest. You ensure a crash and... Then we should just zoom out of here, I think. Unless you're planning to two-step dive. Either Draven is going to be able to 1v2 push, or he's going to let a push into him. But either way, you're not going to really be able to accomplish too much around here. Did you have <laughs> yeah. a, a thought? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what happened. I'll I spilled my messenger. drink. With, I had my oh. mouse and my drink right here. <laughs> Alright, some IRL reviewing to get <laughs> yeah, so drink placement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I put it in the learning objective. <laughs> good. Oh, good. Okay, let's just have a quick look at what happens around here. Draven's a little bit too far up. Ooh, we, get, we give it a double W. I think forcing the Samira, like what what I think we could do here to mind game a bit better. Uh, the, the double W really just ruins any kind of counterplay that you can have. If you make sure that we can't have to choose between you and Draven, then what you can do is just run on top of Samira with your Q channeled, and then she can't react to it, or she just like preemptively pushes it. You hold the Q for longer, and then it fizzles, and you can Q her. Okay. If you can picture that. But the double W here is huge. We have to be here or here, preferably here. Or at least... Yeah, this is rough. <clears throat> we can even recognize in this moment that Rakan can just W and we, we E past and force her mm -hmm. W with your E and then look to hook her away. But now right. all the counterplay is, is kind of gone. I really like the, the target selection there at least on the back end. 
Yeah, Rakan Samira is tricky for Pike. I think I need to think about them more. True. Sure. Okay. That was tricky to avoid the, the dive there. That was a good play. Just a bit of a snowball from the initial fight. Yep. Okay, sprinting mid. Not too much to accomplish right now. Can't get cannon. I would love a two step here. So you are looking for that two step. Yeah. Just a kind of next level or like mind game or mechanic. I haven't I haven't seen from your pike games is where you, you EQ and then you, you flash before yeah. you Q2. I think that this is something that could help bypass this tricky Samira W. Where well does the Samira W block his E? Cause yeah. like how like if how do I dodge the like I don't know how to outplay that. No, no, I, I'm just saying that you 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 E fours and then Q and now she's mm -hmm. not going to W until you throw out your Q, but you don't throw out your Q. So then you just okay, flash yeah, redirect so it she, onto. Yeah, so she wanna she wanna expect the flash. Yeah, yeah. E. It's pretty much just high risk, high reward, you figure she's not gonna flash the E because she's Staring at your queue. Yeah. If she does, like, jump off of me, though, I'm so screwed. Yep. Yeah, it is high risk, high reward. And if you want to take the the more guaranteed route, then looking for a two step here is perfectly fine. Just wanted to mention it. Okay. We'll be able to escape. Avoid the double W. Alright, this is a bit messy. <laughs> I would love a bit more patience in this type of fight, especially versus all these champs that are a bit trickier to lock down initially. I feel like they're pressured to use their spells to dissuade this Rengar to shitting on them and then you can have the freedom to E and W and flash and everything. Yeah. So we just do absolutely nothing. Let Rengar auto, 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 jump, jump, and then Rakan's gonna have to do something, then you E. Or Dina's gonna have to try and like ult to dissuade the Rengar, then you enter. Once again, good target selection. Not sure what the the thought process was around this hover. Yeah, I didn't expect Draven to base when he just got back to lane, so I, I didn't. Yeah, I should have just ran back mid. Okay. Especially if she's jumping forward like that. Okay, cool. Let's see what happens here. So we have a good wave state. Uh, very scary 3v3, posturing forwards like idiots. Yeah, it's tricky. We either... <clears throat> yeah, this is just trying to play around that Samira E. It's hard to make a... Hard to make a case of what the exact best play is here. You either just run this way and deny her E. 
and risk getting kind of shoved. What do you think? Um, About denying the age. If we oh oh you just got shoved. Oh no 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 we for sure run this way then. Okay. We just W run through here. Obviously we don't E through here because we get stunned. But we just did. yeah. Because the the counterplay was you getting shoved by Talia and then Samira jumping onto you from that stun. But yeah, I also thought Diana was there because she just now showed so. I think even if Diana is there, it's still the best play because you have your W, you have your E. Mm. Yeah. So, so let's say Diana is right here. You, you still run this way. Deny the Samira's E. You just got shot, right? They have no hard CC for you anymore. You see Diana, you E up, or you E up, or whatever. That's definitely a Samira specific thing. I'm not sure if any other champs kind of dash like i mean kind of like leona as well right you'd want to stay out of leona's e range so she can't dash away on you alistair right things like that so we, i'm worried about overstaying the tempo here like i know we do have a really strong snowballing 3v3 here but our mid laner just went back to catch a wave versus Talia, he's pinging it. Was this going through your mind? Were you just happy to take any kind of fight that presented itself? Yeah. The piloting? I mean, I just saw Draven hitting the turret, so I thought I should just get some kind of vision here. Um, that was all my only thought process, really. So if we are scared of us having, like, low tempo right now, and Draven overextending, then the solution could be to ping him off. Mm -hmm. I just don't want us to be autopiloting, and like, oh, our teammates are doing this, I'll just go with it, without trying to, you know, get the best result to happen. Fully embracing that ace. Yeah. I was kind of oh. hoping Rengar would stay hidden and we could bait this. Sure. But... I understand in game paces like this, and especially with champs like these, keeping that structured approach is going to be trickier. Definitely something we can still strive for, though. So, what did you want Rengar to do here? To, like, stay here? Yeah, or, you know, mm -hmm. just somewhere where we could set up a kill. Yeah. And then snowball the fight, but... Yeah. Because they're all front-loaded, really. Like, if I can just stay out of the front uh, burst they have, then we win. Yeah. But it's kind of a bad fight we had. Mm. It's these moments in the game that can throw the whole game. When you guys yeah. are fed, you have to snowball. You disrespect their window. They get some shutdowns. Yeah, I should have just not played on this turn. Yeah. And then we'll just win. Luckily, they overstayed too, though. Yeah. Alright. So the pace of this game is looking pretty clean. I really respected the... So opportunistic looks for those bot dives. That was really good to see. Um, did we mention any main points that we could have improved on so far? Uh, I think a lot of the learning here is just Renata. I mean, uh, not Renata. Uh, Samira, Rakan mm. fighting, like thinking more about what they want to do, or yeah. like the whole enemy team, really. True. Uh, yeah, the giving the Rakan double Ws, giving Samira an E. Yeah, and then just wasting that E on that wave actually oh, yes. like changed the entire impact, the entire game. Like, yeah. if I don't E right there, I think that this game is like super clean. Because mm. that yeah, snowballed a lot of things. Yeah, a couple of... It's so annoying how something <laughs> that little, though, can change the whole game. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, I find it kind of exciting, you know? You have to... Yeah, it's well cool from... and annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, like, if you want to 
if you want to get challenger and be one of the best yeah. players in the in the server, you have to be ultra critical on those moments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's the moment of not having resources to hold the freeze, and then the moment of I'm blanking. What was oh the, the playing on on their turn when our Azir is kind of chilling back here. Yeah, I will note that that was a little bit more drastic because we never spent windows to control this area. I'm not saying we missed windows, I'm just saying we never did, you know? A lot of our attention was spent down here fighting in this 3v3. Not necessarily a bad thing, but this could play into that kind of equation of if we had better info around here, we'd be more comfortable doing things like this. If we haven't ever spent any time around here, then this makes plays like this even more scary. Hmm. Okay, we all good? Yep. Fantastic. Thanks for watching. I hope you found something useful from this video, and I hope to see some more eager to improve supports join the School of Support. Just for some more clarity, Honor Roll participates in these sessions, and students can watch all of the VODs of others getting sessions, and individual sessions are still running for that longer one-on-one format. All of the relevant links for these are going to be in the description below. Goodbye.